Thank you for joining us on Sunday Interview. I'm your host, Gravajo Zulu. Now, the Financial Intelligence Center has released the 2018 Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Trends Report, indicating that Zambia could have lost about 6.1 billion kwacha in tax evasion, fraud, corruption, and money laundering. Well, this report is both alarming and indicative of the levels of illicit and high-level crimes in the country. The debate is on, with government calling the report a witch hunt, while some civil society organizations are calling for tougher action on suspects in the report. Chief Government Spokesperson Honorable Doris Deer is on the program to discuss the report and other issues affecting the country, ranging from the economy, KCM, energy, and of course, high minimum prices. Minister, welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, there have been a lot of events in the past one week, uh, resignation of a pres presidential press aid, release of this report, and many others. I, are we in a crisis as a country? Is government, uh, to be particular, is government in a crisis? Let, let me put it on record, Gravazio. There is an elected government in place, and the government is responding to the aspirations of the people, and uh, there is absolutely no crisis in government. And uh, the government has plans for the development of this country shared by the citizens through the 2030 vision, through the Seventh National Development Plans, and through the annual budgets. And uh, as far as uh, we are concerned in government, uh, the president, his cabinet, and the rest of the officials in government uh, continue to execute uh, their duties in response to the aspirations of the people of Zambia. There's what people would call a high-profile resignation of uh, the spokesperson to the president. Quite dramatic and, 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 and unexpected. Uh, Is State House in a crisis? There's absolutely no crisis at State House. By its uh, nature, in the civil service, people get appointed to the civil service, and at some point, uh, various individuals decide when they wish to exit uh, to pursue other interests, uh, as we heard from the statement released by Mr. Amos Chanda, who just uh, did resign. And individuals have uh, various uh, pursuits in their lives, and it should be normal for somebody uh, to be appointed to the civil service and then decide that uh, at this particular time, they are going to exit the civil service. Isn't it a bit strange for, for someone to walk away from such a high-profile job? I, I think this is not the first resignation uh, in government. And uh, Mr. Chanda made it very clear that uh, he has decided to pursue uh, private interests. And uh, we can only wish him the best. Now let's move on to the um, uh, FIC report, which, which came out recently. Government seems to be highly agitated by the report published by FIC on money laundering and terrorist financing trends for 2018. Why? Let's make it clear. Government is the FIC because the FIC does not operate outside government. It was created by government as a response to the people of Zambia or the people of Zambia. Uh, as uh, aspirations to ensure that there is monitoring of uh, uh, financial flows uh, to avoid uh, support for terrorist activities and uh, other illicit uh, financial inflows and uh, outflows. So let us be very clear. This is a government institution. So now, why, are you, why, why are you fighting your own institution, your is, own creation? There is no agitation. Government is just trying to make it very clear that the law must be observed. First of all, in a democracy, the most important institution in the, go in the government, in the three wings of government, is the executive. Because the executive derives their power from the people. They are the only part of government that derive people power. They are given that power by the people. And in that executive, the head is the president. And the president and government is a structure in, each, in, 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 in which it operates. Now, the FIC is one of those structures. And government is very clear that the FIC is a very important part of government. And it must operate in a particular way. It is, has been provided by the law to investigate, to monitor financial flows, inflows, outflows, so that it can uh, monitor uh, 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 certain instances when there is belief that these uh, inflows may be, may be illicit. Now, they have a mandate to do that, and it is very clear. And in their preparing their report, it's also clear in the law that they need to share that information with another set of professionals 
the anti-corruption, the police, the drug enforcement, because in government there must be order. Everybody must understand their role. So the FIC role is provided for to do what they do and then share that report with other professional agencies. Agencies, some of them, who have the mandate to actually prosecute because the FIC has no uh, mandate to prosecute. They have another responsibility. The FIC has a responsibility to educate, I think in Section 5 of the 2016 Act, to educate citizens. Educate, educate citizens, yeah, just citizens. like the anti-corruption. They sensitize citizens about why, anti -cor uh, why corrup corruption is bad. The drug enforcement, they sensitize citizens. The Zambia Revenue Authority, they sensitize citizens. The, um, the FIC, they have a responsibility to sensitize citizens on why the citizens should be aware on what they do and also on how to monitor uh, illicit inflows. So what, what are you saying, not, Minister, that they should not, not publish? It is not the responsibility of the FIC to collect information and then put it in the public opinion as a judge. Their responsibility, the FIC, is very clear. They have to do that job, investigate information they get, and then share that information with the anti-corruption, with the drug enforcement, with the police, who will then now take it to another level because they do a second level of investigation until they are clear that, yes, that 20 uh, million kwacha or $2 million that got into somebody's account is genuinely for uh, NGO activities and not for something else, and it can be explained. But just to share that information publicly and accept public judgment on information that has not yet been tested through the whole process, particularly in the courts of law, then it continues to just be intelligence. But, now, but, 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 but now let me make this FIC point. Says let me make this point first Brown. of all. Let me make this point first of all. Intelligence by its nature, intelligence by its nature is not supposed to be shared with the public. Because by its nature it means that it is raw information and it needs to go through further veracity tests, whether it's the anti corruption and finally in the courts of law because by its nature it's intelligence and it has to be verified further by other agencies they're on firm ground in the sense that they have a mandate to collect information and they have a mandate to, to sensitize no, and, and we, educate we have very, they're saying they're on firm ground we have they, very they, they are not wrong by publishing the information first of all so who's wrong first of you, all, it's one, you said it's one government first of all that FIC is the point is government you also government all, but then you can agree on whether it, it should be published or not First of all, it's very important that the citizens, the public, understands that I think in this country we've politicized everything. It is not possible. It is not possible that in the same government where we have the office of the attorney general as the chief legal advisor, and he has advised very clearly that in section 5 of the FIC, it only relates to educating the public and educating and informing the public about the existence of the FIC, not to share intelligence information with the citizens. Now, it, it's important we understand. What they do is very important. But to share raw data with the citizens is a recipe for anarchy. It's like the police. If you suspect that Mr. B, the car he's driving, is a stolen vehicle, you're not going to go to the radio and say you believe it's a stolen vehicle because you've never seen your neighbor driving that car before. You will go to the police so that the police can verify because they have that capacity to investigate. Because otherwise you go and tell the whole street that you believe Mr. B's vehicle is stolen and yet Mr. B might have an explanation that actually I inherited this vehicle or I was just given this vehicle by a friend or I have hired this vehicle to drive it for a few days. But you'd have published that information to all your neighbors put that person in dispute maybe there's actually an explanation so intelligence by its nature cannot be in the public domain in fact even in terms of natural justice even in terms of natural justice it is expected that somebody is innocent until they go to the courts of law in this case we'll be saying the fic is infallible they cannot make a mistake we are saying that the fic should be the judge so when it goes to court it should just be rubber stamped then what is the purpose of the scc and the other fic has not mentioned names they, don't, they, don't the argue that way. they haven't given no, any names but that before. is the point so it's probably somebody 
has no justification to feel the point is that is why down. it is a recipe for disaster because they should be able to share information with the professionals where they can be honest enough so that those other professionals the SCC the police and others can also do their job and then get explanations on cases that should be discarded and on cases that should be prosecuted the SEC does almost the same job. The OP does almost the same job. The DC does almost the, jo the same job. How come they don't go out and professionally misconduct themselves in terms of sharing intelligence before it is actually tested, even through the courts of law in the sense that somebody should be found guilty uh, in the courts of law? We are trying to find people guilty in public uh, space, in terms of public opinion. It is dangerous. Let me emphasize, when the president said we have to revisit the law, the law is there, but he means that we may have to make it even more clear so that people understand their roles, whether it's SEC, it's FIC, it's uh, the police, so that we don't dis get this kind of confusion. It's taken you too long, because I, I want to say that, isn't it disappointing that we're back to 2017, 2018, where the report was out, government protested, complained, has come back 2019 well we'll have the report out in 2020 again well and, I, and we'll be back to the same stage of debating let, and, let, and trying to agree on whether we should publish or not what should be clear what should be clear is that the fight against money laundering illicit uh, money inflows the fight against corruption it's a clear government agenda and government has to pursue these activities in a professional manner. We cannot politicize them. Because when we politicize these activities, we take away from the true work that these, some of these people who are doing it quietly are doing. There are a lot of institutions that are involved in uh, monitoring uh, these issues that let us not take away from them by politicking. And we need to separate professional work from Politic politicking that happens every day uh, in this country. And if we continue to engage in this manner, this whole agenda is going to lose purpose, it's going to lose focus, and nobody will take it seriously because it will just be about hearsay, witch hunting, and trying to say who's B, who's Mr. X. Government is saying, the law is very clear. Let these professional agencies do their work professionally, share intelligence professionally, and when they are ready to prosecute, then we should hear about it. We should not hear rumors. And if the FIC law right now uh, it doesn't seem to be clear to them, it is why the president suggested that maybe we need to make the law much clearer so that there is no doubt. But the law provides in Section 5 that they have to educate the citizens. The anti-corruption does that. The DEC do that. Even the police educate the citizens on uh, their role as the, as the police. But they don't share intelligence until they have gone through the processes and they are ready and then they can go to court. When it is in court, then we all know that there is a case and let the two sides uh, fight it out. But we should not be operating on rumors. Maybe, maybe the, you need to answer this question, Minister. Do, does government believe in this report? You've read it. You've had it before it went to the public, before we all saw it. Well, do you believe in it? Well, personally, I, I, I didn't see it before it went to the public. But the point is not whether I have seen it as Minister Dora or Minister Monakatwe or even indeed His Excellency. The point is that intelligence by its nature, it is just that. It is intelligence. It is not for public consumption. It only be becomes public consumption when those agencies who are authorized to make a case verify and say no actually there is a case here because some of the uh, reports in there they, they 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 will actually compromise ongoing cases by other agencies such as the SCC and the police you're actually putting in public domain cases that are being investigated and you risk actually jeopardizing uh, the work of other agencies and this is why Government is not agitated, but we must have order. In a democracy, you need to have order so that people know what they need to do. But when we bring in personalities now that they should become bigger than the office, you see, we always hear this argument of this institution. No, the, uh, the head of that institution is autonomous. Autonomous from what? From who? Because the executive that was given power by the people in a democracy are the only people with power to allocate resources to everybody and to even appoint those same people. So autonomous from who? 
You see, the but people but, but, of Zambia... But, but the government seems to be really fighting this, this no, complication. No, it is not and, a and, fight. And of course you see it from... Let us from, be very from, clear. From, from elements or people associated with the ruling party let us, who come out very vicious let against, us against, be very against clear. Uh, FIC. Government is, is, is not fighting. Government would like order. Government would like order. Government is the, is, 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 is the institution that is representing the people's aspirations. FIC is part of government. And sometimes when we notice that there is some disorder happening, we must come out and say there is disorder happening. So why hasn't and government instructed happy, FIC to stop publishing? I am happy that even the Drug Enforcement Commission came out very strongly. And those are supposed the to be professionals. They don't probably be, be feeling... Uh, 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 beaten to the game by no, FIC. they are not beaten to the game. They do the work and they do it professionally. And sometimes, so, remember that the FIC is just an intelligence unit. They just collect information. Now, they need to share that. But these are professionals, isn't yeah, it? But listen you, to you, this. You put professionals on this, but, but in, follow, in this center, but and they've gathered the information, and they're telling well, you, doesn't this mean is that what we're seeing. Don't make mistakes. What we are saying is that, yes, they have a right to gather that information. No doubt. No doubt. But that information must then be shared with another level of professionals. Now, some of the information in that report, I'm aware, is already in court. Some of the information in that report is already being investigated. So the other wings are also being professional and saying, look, you're going to jeopardize. You want to be seen in the public. We have to do this work quietly. And if you're not collaborating and operating in the manner you should be operating and creating a witch hunt, you're even going to make those who are supposed to give us information either fear or give us wrong information. Look, this is about a country. It's not about individuals. So let us take away emotion. Let us take away politics. The FIC was created by government. You see, sometimes you hear those who sing the loudest talking about uh, lifestyle audits. When ZRA visits them, then they get a shock and say, no, this is political. It's because we want to polit politicize everything. Let me even talk about these lifestyle audits. Not that anybody is averse, but in government, this is an everyday process. There are institutions to monitor all Zambians in terms of lifestyle. What is ZRA there for? To make sure that people pay their taxes. What is the SEC there for? What is the FIC there for? What is the Drug Enforcement Commission there for? What is the police there for? It's a lifestyle audit all the time. So but Zambians feel, maybe if I should generalize, that there seems to be too much disparity between the standard of living for certain people in government and the, the salaries they get. I, I, I don't mean, know. It cannot not only be politicians, even civil servants. People no, are asking, no, no, where no, do they get the money? Not from? even away from civil servants. There are people in private sector who have, who have wealth, who have wealth in this country. So for me, let us have confidence in uh, our institutions that monitor lifestyles in this country. Let us have... Should there be a formal declaration me, of a lifestyle audit? But there is. So for, the, for politicians, at least for politicians, every year uh, uh, they, we declare. But let me just make this point very clear. Let me make it point very clear. You're not going to have a 17 million list of Zambians and say this one, this, this one, that. That's why there are institutions that do that. Now, why we should fight corruption... And this government has demonstrated its commitment. The fact that we're even talking about it here. In other jurisdictions, people don't even talk about these things. The fact that we are even talking about it here, it is because we are such an open society. Even rumors, even facts sometimes get lost along the way. So that is very important. But on the other side, let us not hamper entrepreneurship. Let us not glorify poverty in this country. Let us not make it difficult for those who are enterprising to even fear being enterprising because people are going to say, if that one is driving a nice car, then either they must be a corrupt or they must be a devil worshiper. Let us not glorify poverty because we can't share poverty. We can't. This, this, this report, Minister, is, is telling on, 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 on the part of what is happening in the country. It does not point particularly to government, but it points even to individuals. Well, and, and government must, uh, ideally, listen, the, the, the reaction expected from you is that we've seen the report, we are concerned, but, and but, we, we are acting on it. And, no, and governments... You're uh, missing the point. The report is not special in the sense that this job is done every day, 365 days a year. Every day. There's work on fighting corruption in this country. So there's nothing special about the report in the sense that uh, it, is, uh, it beats what happens 365 days a year. This is just one part of the whole 
fight against corruption. The FIC does its job collecting intelligence. The OP does its job. The SEC does its job. The police do their job. And finally, we expect that justice will happen in the court. Because even the courts have a role to play. So just sharing intelligence, alarming the public, and then you might find that some of those cases, uh, reports uh, that have been, uh, cases that have been cited, maybe there's an explanation. Because just to say to the public, money moved from here to there. But the explanations are not being given. It's just that money moved. We are, sometimes we are just alarming the public. That's why intelligence by its nature is not for consumption by everybody. It's supposed to be for the professionals. So that where that intelligence has been verified, then it can go to court. But then the, the public, some of, some of then the here. public will know that oh, okay, the anti-corruption now is in court. What would like to know is how many cases the anti-corruption has in court, because then those are actually in court. But if we just keep uh, sharing intelligence about, there's no explanation, but money moved from A to B. We are not saying that some of those cases are not real. That's not what government so is an saying. An individual owning 49 that, houses that, built by, 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 by a look, company that, that was contracted by government. But look. Government giving a contract to, to, to a company that's three months yeah, old. Yeah, but that's, and, and but those are, these are, facts those are there. no, that's intelligence. Facts will be determined in the court. That is the point. That is intelligence information. But facts will be determined in a court of law. Let us be very clear. And as the investigative wings take that information, along the way, some of those cases may fall off because there will be explanations. Others will ultimately find themselves in court. So that's why we are saying it is dangerous and extremely dangerous to share raw intelligence before it is verified by other wings and they have concluded their investigations and they go to the courts. Government is n not averse to the F FIC because FIC is part of government. Let's be clear. But we cannot allow one part of government to begin to consider that it is above everybody and cannot follow its own uh, law, including Section 5 of the FIC, which is very clear that let it educate the citizens, but it does not say share intelligence with the citizens. It doesn't say that. So what, what, what would you say, say that? that the debate on the FIC report has been lost in, 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 in politics it, and it hijacked just, by politicians, and it lost, in the, and lost it, on the disclosure and aspect? And it distracts you know, the it has nation. brought, a lot, of th brought and, out a lot of things, and it like tax evasion it by, by medium and, and you're small missing the point. ZRA, you're missing the point. ZRA is busy every day doing that job, 365 days a year. And when the FIC have the intelligence that somebody is evading tax, instead of making it uh, distract the public, they have to take that information to ZRA. Which they've done. So that, yes, and ZRA does their job. They will announce if somebody has been evading tax. We've seen them. We've seen ZRA do its work. It's normal job, 365 days a year. So why should two, three cases relating to tax evasion in the report obsess us and detract us from doing work for the people of Zambia, addressing the turbulence in the economy, addressing the billy meal prices. That's what the Zambians are looking for. Addressing issues of mines on the copper belt. That's what the Zambians are looking for. But here we are, a whole nation, detracted by... There are other cases outside the FIC report. They're not the only ones. But we are being detracted by only a few, and yet we should allow the in investigative wings to do their work no, and then see this go to court and then justice will be done. Justice is not rumor mongering in public. It's not justice. By its nature, justice is that these matters will go to court. Government is not, is not against the FIC. Is, is, is government position that this report is a rumor, is gossip, the, until it's been proved? Government position is that this is intelligence information and it's not for public consumption until it has been through the processes that should prove it and take it to court. Then we can hear the facts in court and justice can be done. There, there, there's a term that has come up in, in, in this report, politically exposed persons. And, 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 it's and, a not and, a and new there, term. And there seems to be a trend that these politically exposed I, I'm not persons so sure that they, are getting contracts, I'm not getting sure, deals, I'm getting not their, sure that building. The FIC, and, and, and I'm not sure that the FIC is just about politically exposed persons. I think it's just in, in, oh. 
monitoring all financial flows, looking out for illicit financial flows, whether it's by politically exposed people or not politically exposed people. But also, there are politically exposed people who, by their declaration, are in business anyway. So the point is that, look, the FIC was not created for politicians. It was created for all citizens. Now... But then it's telling the nation, this report, that, well... Politically exposed persons. There's nothing are wrong with it. There's with nothing wrong with a person. There's nothing wrong with public, a person public, in public government. Public contracts. There's nothing wrong with a person in government to have to be in business. And, and I think maybe we need to make that clear to the people of Zambia. There's nothing wrong with a person in government, whether a civil servant, whether as a politician, to be in business. But there shouldn't be everything wrong with no, ministers no, getting contracts. No, when, when the, here's my point. And, here's, and, and, here's my point. Because people have businesses that they declare. And if somebody is running a company, it means that it is a company, not as the individual, but as a company. And that in government, there are laws and there are procedures. And that if any company where a politician is associated, all they need to do is always declare, as we do every year, that their business, if it is pursuing government business, then it should be considered that they are part of that business. And this happens everywhere in the world and there's nothing wrong with it. What is, is wrong? It, is it no, no, no. What is, let me continue. What is wrong? What is wrong is to get business fraudulently. What is wrong is to fail to deliver the business you were awarded. What is wrong is uh, to influence to get business fraudulently. Now, those, what is wrong is now, to use your undue influence those, to get a contract in government. You sit in cabinet but, and then you would have road contracts but, and, and, but and, and, how and be, taking road projects but, and, but and, and, and supplying any to the very government that you Any company that applies for business in government, there are processes, there are procurement processes, and that those people who are procuring will base their judgment on price, on quality, on competition, and so on. It, you'd be saying that it is pos it's not possible, like we've said many times as government, that ministers or permanent secretaries, whether they have business or not, they don't sit on, uh, procure on procurement teams. You'll be saying that private people cannot, do not influence procurement processes. It can only be politicians. I think that is a wrong assumption. Let's get back to the point. The point is just that wherever there is corruption, whether it is being done by a politically exposed person or a private person, whether it is being done by a journalist or anybody, it must be exposed. That is the issue. And it must be investigated and then it must be taken to the courts. But let us not assume uh, guilt based on how I feel, based on what I should think you should be. Let us not uh, fight corruption by even taking away entrepreneurship spirit in this country because we want to believe that you no know, as long as uh, that person has a uh, as a business or a contract then it must be corrupt where there's corruption those who are responsible for fighting corruption the sec the drug enforcement and the fic will work together and say here there was corruption and we have had evidence we have cases in the courts there's evidence that these processes work and we must have confidence in them Two things before we leave the FIC topic, and I, I, I guess one of them is which way forward. I, 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 you are amending the law, the, governing first, the FIC, first of all, and, and how the soon law it has is been very, done? The law is very clear, but clearly, as His Excellency President Ed Galungu uh, mentioned, if it is not very clear to them, maybe we should make it just clear so that there is no professional fighting between the other agencies and the FIC, and everybody can be clear that this is the work they are supposed to be doing. The OP, for example share a lot of intelligence in this country with the relevant agencies but we don't hear them uh, s spreading intelligence uh, to the public and cause panic because they know that this intelligence when they have it it's just that it's intelligence but it must be given to the right authorities whether to the police so that the police make an arrest whether it's to the SCC so that they can prosecute whether it is to the, uh, the, the DA so that they can prosecute that's how an orderly uh, government must operate and we want to rein in the F FIC that you're doing a great job a great job indeed but that information that intelligence is for the other professional organizations you have a job to educate the citizens that keep away from from uh, 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 financial illicit financial uh, activities that is their job to, to educate the public to sensitize the public, but not to share raw data with the citizens and believe that the FIC is above 
government and other institutions, in every government and students of democracy, the executive is always the strongest. And the executive is headed by a president. And that is because they derive true power from the people and not from anybody. Is there, is there a possibility the executive being the strongest can manipulate this report? We have no reason to manipulate it. Because that's why we have entrusted those people to come out with this information. We are not saying that the information cannot be ver ver uh, validated. What we are saying is that let's not cause panic in the nation. We entrusted those people as a government. We entrusted them to do the job. And they are doing a good job. All we are saying is that don't alarm the nation because this information by its nature, when we created the law in parliament, we anticipated this, that we should not become a country of rumor mongers where there is a real case and this country can prove many times how many cases have gone to court and nobody has been spared in this country from a president's office. So we should have confidence in our systems. All we are saying is that let's be professional in the fight against corruption. Let us not make it sensational. Let us not make it political. Because then it will defeat the whole purpose. Let's move on and, and look at KCM. And um, a, a provision liquidator was appointed for, for KCM soon after the president visited the call belt and indicated that government would part company with Vedanta uh, as invest in KCM. Now Vedanta has taken government to court and, and they're disputing this. And it, should Zambians expect a drawn-out battle, protracted battle? Well, the issue is that we are not there yet. What is important where we are is that government, again representing the people of Zambia, has over a long time felt that we are not getting the true benefits from our asset, that we are not getting the true benefit. Clearly, there's money to be made in the mining business. We have seen continued investment in the mining business. We have seen other mines uh, continue to exist here. Now, if there's money to be made in this business, there are benefits. Our concern is, why aren't we seeing these benefits for the people of Zambia? Because the people of Zambia still have a very long development agenda to ensure that we have roads, we have housing, we have jobs. Our young people are looking for jobs. And these jobs can only come from investment in the economy. That's why we can't share poverty. So our concern as government is there must be something wrong with our relationship. Because if there's business in this sector, how come our relationship between ZCCMIH, representing the people of Zambia, and uh, Vandata, who came together and formed KCM? We don't seem to be... We felt that we are not benefiting from this relationship. And this has been a protracted issue since 2013 until finally a tough decision has been made that, look, the asset belongs to the people of Zambia and it, we want it to continue operating so that the jobs there are not affected and also the obligations of uh, um, uh, suppliers and other uh, contractual obligations. But our relationship maybe should be wound up so that we can find another partner for this asset and maybe even reap better than we are doing now. So it's as clear as that. It's just an issue of between ZCCMIH on behalf of the people of Zambia and Vendata that we think our relationship is not working. Look, it's like in marriage. The principle of marriage works, but sometimes it doesn't work between two particular people. They have to go and find other partners maybe for it to work. So it's the same here, that in this particular case, there's business in the mines, but clearly between the two parties, specifically. The and, uh, and you the, need to be very clear again on this one. Is it nationalization? And uh, we've heard talk about that. You're, you're handing it over to another private it, investor. It's not nationalization. Government on behalf of the people of Zambia has an interest in that mine. We already have an interest, but we are not seeing a benefit from the interest. So ZCCMIH declared a dispute. Now, we as government, we must have be interested because there are Zambians working there, number one. Number two, it's a Zambian asset, and it must be looked after while we resolve this commercial agreement that we have between us and Vendata. So it is not nationalization. I think let us be extremely clear. It is not nationalization. What it is is a process for us to get out of a relationship with one partner and hopefully find a relationship with another partner so that we can continue this mine operating the, the speed with which uh, action was taken to appoint a good data and quickly move in seems to suggest 
there's another there's already an investor on the horizon is is that, is that the position not the any interest from look i think the president are there are interest around the, the president has been very clear that he's consulting with uh, experts uh, that decision had to be made but at the same time that uh, discussions people have come forward to show uh, interest and i'm sure the minister of mines will keep us updated uh, clearly this matter has just happened uh, there are a lot of issues to resolve we are happy uh, and very grateful to his excellency the president uh, that he has really uh, continued to take um, interest or, uh, uh, in those staff there, the workers there, that they should not suffer necessarily, and uh, their salaries have been well paid for due for 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 May, uh, even after the liquidation was announced. So. It, as government, our interest is for the Zambians. There are Zambians who work there. It might not be my relative, it might not be the president's relative, but there are Zambians who work at that mine. And they have families to look after. And that's what is preoccupying the president. That's why as soon as we notice that, look, we have talked this relationship, we don't seem to be going anywhere. The decision had to be taken there and then because our concern are the Zambians that they're, they're not being paid, uh, suppliers are not being paid, and this affects families, real families. There's, there's that a is risk our that interest. Th there may not be an investor coming up soon, and meaning government will have to run the mine for some time. Look, like I said... Uh, pay salaries and like keep it afloat, which like is a difficult thing to do. Like we have said, uh, the president is very alive to the issues around this and would like to see a solution very, very quickly. I can assure you it's really preoccupying him. And uh, I, I think these events have just happened. Uh, let's see where we're going. The Minister of Mines, I'm sure, will keep us updated where we are now from when uh, the process began to find out where are we now and what is happening now. But we have no doubt that there are a lot of other people also who are interested there who have already begun to show interest. But uh, we have to get there and ensure that we get there as quickly as possible, keeping in mind that the asset must be maintained. It must be maintained, and that's the mind. But also that the workers must be uh, uh, safeguarded and also that those who are owed uh, uh, by, by, the, by KCM should also uh, be looked after because that, that is what is interesting the Zambians, that is what is in their interest, that these issues must be resolved. If the workers were being looked after, if supplies, suppliers were being paid, government would have had no reason to take this decision. It, it would have had no reason. But we took the assets, the interest of the asset as a Zambian asset and also the interest of the workers that uh, they needed somebody to help them in their, in their working environment. And this is why such a tough decision was made. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the Zambian people, that they must benefit from this asset. Uh, a, a quick one before we leave this topic. Uh, the, the issue of um, uh, government taking over and... and, and um, uh, Vedanta is saying they've invested heavily and we saw government take over Zamta and we're paying heavily to Lab Green. Uh, do we see a similar situation? The, the difference is very clear. Um, go, while Zamtel was nationalization, KCM is not nationalization. It's just winding up of a relationship with one partner so that we find another partner. Let's move to the, to the economy. Last week there, was the, there were announcements about austerity measures and the promise was that the Minister of Finance was to take a list to Cabinet to discuss the, the laws that you were cancelling out and others that you were not going to disperse. Mm -hmm. Has that been done? Well, clearly we haven't met yet as a Cabinet. You know, the President uh, uh, was away and I'm sure at the earliest uh, Cabinet when it's called, uh, the Minister of Finance also, you recall, has been going around the country to consult on the new tax uh, uh, system. So government has been quite preoccupied with trying to hear the people, hear the Zambians and uh, chat a way forward and also see what is the best option for us as a country through this economic turbulence. How do we get back? What is priority? What must be done? For example, supplies to hospitals, schools, and uh, basic infrastructure, agriculture. That what are the priorities that what we can't do without? And also, what is it we can postpone, we can delay, we can restructure? And this is what is uh, preoccupying the Minister of Finance. And also, 
what is the best way for us to be efficient in terms of our tax system. So she has been going around the country, as you are aware. So I, th I think um, and the next cabinet or the, the one after that, she should be able now to put all this uh, information, intelligence that she has gathered and say, my colleagues in cabinet, I think this is the best way forward. Let's, let's yeah. move on to probably maybe politics and look at NDF. <laughs> <laughs> the resolutions there in have really been condemned and, and there's been an uproar on some of the resolutions that really government did not think through this 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 process and may land us in more costs the ndf was about citizens not about government it was about citizens a process created by government for the but citizens the, again in a democracy a government uh, has to have an executive and the executive must govern you cannot wish a, a democracy where there's nobody in charge. Uh, you might not like democracy, you might not like it, but right now the, we, there's nothing else. And the point is that in a democracy, somebody has to be in charge, and the in charge is the executive on behalf of the people who elected it. And so, how else will a law be created except through government taking it to parliament? How else? So... People must see, debate. you know, sometimes I listen to the radio, I will follow uh, some online publications. It's clear that people are arguing from an uninformed position. And, and a person in the street who's not in government or in parliament will not create the law. They can be on radio talking every day, but they will not create a Hoping law. Hoping you would listen to them. But that's what we did. The Zambia said the 2016 uh, uh, constitution has lacunas. That's what they said. The but, Zambians. But, but then people are concerned. Zambians are concerned that instead of addressing these lacunas, uh, uh, the NGF went to amend even see, clauses that had no lacunas. See, and just, you see, just to change them for the sake of not people, being happy with but it. But that's you know? what people... Zambians made submissions to the Minister of Justice that w there are lacunas in this constitution, but also there are other issues that we are not happy with. The Minister of Justice went around the country he, people went to his office to submit. You see, the point is that for those who have the opportunity to want to be on radio or to be online, they think they are the only Zambians. So they think when they say Zambians, it's just them, Zambians. They don't believe that the other Zambians who maybe are not making noise everywhere, but they wrote submissions. So do you think Zambians want deputy ministers back? Well, this is that a position? Look, the NDF was not about government. It was about citizens. And since 17 million citizens can't meet, a representatives of 17 million Zambians met. And at that meeting, these are the issues they came with. And they made arguments at that meeting. And at that meeting, in, with the, res in the respect of, again, that the majority will be heard, these matters were discussed very, very conclusively. Heated debates until people agreed that these are the issues. And uh, one, of the, very sure. one, of the, one of the arguments that was being given, in fact, by citizens at the NDF um, over deputy ministers was that because by nature cab uh, cabinet ministers are at cabinet, are at ministries in Osaka, there's an absence of government, especially in rural areas, because m ministers get very involved with issues in Lusaka and do not find the time sometimes to go out and visit the people. Because government is not for just Lusaka. Government is for Zambians everywhere and they want to see leaders. And there were arguments that there's an absence of government in other parts of this country because ministers do not find the time to travel because they are always involved. Yeah, would, in, would that be a priority in, really? in, 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 in a no, country which is struggling? Cancelling loans for development, uh, failing to develop and, and paying much of the... Uh, Again, I'll tell uh, you another debate. Using much of the money Again, in, in I'll the tell you, debate. And then I'll you tell you what the people at that meeting were saying. At the NDF, some people argued that, look, since deputy ministers are appointed from the same parliament, you see, right now, there are ministers in parliament and there are members of parliament. It's the same number, 156. It won't change. And ministers and... Uh, deputy minister and the parliamentarians get the same salaries they get the same uh, vehicles they get the same uh, housing allowances so the argument that were being put at the ndf was that this is less costly 
than even have, having executive mayors who need a new payroll. These, it's, they're already on the payroll. But then the attendant costs of a vehicle, uh, but, a but even, vehicle, but, but even a secretary, now, phone bills, but, and water look, bills. And but look, you don't pay those for, for, look, for, for but, ordinary members of parliament. But look, we, we, don't, we don't do but that. But look, so. when deputy ministers were removed, the civil service remained the same. The same secretaries who were serving them. You, you know, these, these arguments were given at the NDF and that the cost to the country in terms of attending to issues by government being presence, present in many parts of the country often is more than uh, what people would think as a minimal cost compared to even executive mayors who would have a whole new payroll. Those arguments were advanced at the NDF and ultimately I'm sitting here referring to those arguments because they took the day at the NDF. A legal system a legal process that was agreed upon to discuss outstanding issues around the constitution. Those who had a different opinion came. They won on some things. They didn't win on other things. That is the nature of democracy. And government now has uh, uh, received those uh, uh, resolutions, passed them there, and ultimately has to do the thing that, has, that can only be done by one institution in this house. That is parliament. Uh, 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 has the report been debated and discussed by cabinet? Adopted? From, you know? No, when, when cabinet uh, tends to the NDF, we will make announcement. For now, uh, it has not been tabled before cabinet yet. But it has to ultimately go to parliament. Remember, at the end of the day, the only institution in this country that makes laws. In fact, the, 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 most, uh, uh, the, the highest privilege for any member of parliament is to be part of the of a constitution making process because ultimately that's the supreme law of the land and if you are not part of that process then clearly you miss the very important part of being a member of parliament mm -hmm. there's one issue at your ministry before we close uh, iba and 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 there's a strong belief that you are using iba to victimize uh, private voices uh, private stations uh, again, we have brought a lot of politics into the media, I believe. Uh, myself and uh, uh, P.S. Casolo, we've tried very hard to have an open door policy with all media houses, understanding that media is not just for reporting news, but that they're also businesses, and that we must do everything possible to encourage the growth of the media in this country as businesses. Beyond just news, there are film platforms, uh, there are other entertainment a platform, educational platforms, and so on. But even as we do that, there are laws through the IBA that govern the way media houses in this country should operate. And I personally have been extremely resistant to get the IBA to even use some of the powers that they have in terms of shutting down uh, some of these uh, media houses because we've hoped that a process of dialogue will get people to realize that you cannot host a program, even if it's a phone-in program, and allow a citizen to phone in and just insult anybody and call it press freedom. It is not press freedom. And we expect that the media houses will not uh, lose their responsibility to the citizens and say, no, it's the citizens who called. No, because those who manage those programs, especially phone-in programs, they should be trained people who know how to manage a program. If we were talking about the economy on a phone-in program, we expect that people will phone in and say, here, government made a mistake. Others will say, no, government did well. But they should be discussing the economy. But when somebody phones in and just says, no, me, I want to insult so and so, they are useless, they, they become derogatory in the way they describe the person and not the matter. Because there are a lot of uninformed people who like to participate and all they do is just be emotional. We have to be concerned. And when we write to a media house and say, you're failing to manage your programs, you're just creating anarchy, they say, no, this is press freedom. It is not. Press freedom has responsibility. But shouldn't you be pushing for amendment of certain clauses like the one which asks these um, radio stations to submit recordings of their programs every two weeks? That's a cost. Isn't it? Well, if IBA wants to monitor, why don't they use their own cost well, to do that? Look, uh, I have had a lot of discussions with IBA. And I've heard some of the concerns from the media houses. But I'm not so sure that uh, this uh, cause for then wanting to demean the head of the IBA. I think this just calls for dialogue that, look, maybe we might not be able to afford it. The law provides that IBA can, at any point, demand recordings. But 
clearly. But you demand that every two weeks you must submit I, this I thing think at your own cost. Well, isn't, isn't that an, an unnecessary well, cost? I believe that even that. And some be, stations are struggling. You, you believe, should be aware, community stations. Are. I believe in other countries it's a law. In other countries it's, it's, it's the law to do that. Here, the IBA has even been willing to discuss. So to me, we should create a culture in this country where we do not believe that every time government makes a decision, then it is out to get somebody or then we, or we get a demeaning response. We should be able to discuss and say, actually, I have a better view. Maybe why don't you try this? You know, so that we have this. Uh, you, and, and as we come to the end of this program, I, I really would like to emphasize one thing once again. Government is committed to fighting corruption in this country. That's why we have ministers in court. That's why even the office of the president has never been spared. In Zambia, ministers, uh, private sector, they have never been spared. We have a track record we should be proud of. But on the other hand, let us not politicize corruption. Let us not make having wealth in this country uh, a taboo. Let us not glorify poverty. There are real challenges and we want to share in those resources. Let us not reduce wealth creation to only foreigners. If the foreigners have money in this country, then it's okay. We will not grow our country unless Zambians become wealthy. That's why I have said many times in government that we should give businesses to Zambians. Whether it's government business, it's private business, it's business in the banks. Why would banks be going to hire event companies from South Africa and not and be prepared to pay millions to those uh, event companies from South Africa and not pay Zambian event companies? We want a Zambian to have a, a, a contract for $10 million because then they'll pay taxes here, they'll keep their money here, that we will share in that wealth. But if we criminalize even those who give business are scared to give Zambian business because they say if we pay Zambian 10 million, people will say it's corruption. Even when it's genuine business. And this is something we need to take away from our minds. Because even when a bank manager is sitting in the bank, a Zambian, and he has a contract for 10 million dollars, he's afraid to give to a Zambian because he believes he'll be embroiled in corruption. He would rather give it to a foreigner. And we, the Zambians, will be so happy to see that 10 million go to the foreigner and then leave Zambia. And then we get no taxes and then we don't get development and we'll wonder. That's why we are saying the FIC is doing a good job, but they have to do it professionally as guided by the law and share intelligence with, intelli with other agencies. We are saying Corruption is a very important fight in this country because we want the resources to go where they should be going. But we should also not criminalize entrepreneurship. We should not criminalize giving Zambians businesses. We should, that's why the president said we need 20% in construction to go to Zambians. Why? Because it's a lot of money being expended there. Because we will not see Zambian millionaires unless they're in business. That's why we are all just focused on a few politicians because we are failing to give Zambians businesses. And that's where the change should be coming from. Minister, Thank it's been you. a pleasure having you on the program. That's all we have for you this evening. And our guest was the Chief Government Spokesperson, Doris Lear, talking to various issues that are affecting the country. Till next week, sometime, pleasant viewing.